Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about GSSPD, that's glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. Um, this is actually a chemistry test, so it actually means that you can use a biochemistry analyzer to actually measure the uh, the enzyme, the enzyme quantity. So that's quantitatively. So we can measure uh, glucose phosphate which is an enzyme quantitatively using the biochemistry analyzer. We also have point of care uh, devices that can also measure the uh, DCSPD level quantitatively. They are also available. And in this video, I'm going to focus on the qualitative one because it's very simple and inexpensive and people are easily able to do this one. Good. Um, but before that, as a background, what is GCSPD? So GCSPD is a glucose phosphate dehydrogenase. This is an enzyme that is in the red blood cell and then it helps in um, protecting the red blood cell against uh, damage from reactive uh, oxygen species and so this enzyme is very important there are people who unfortunately have low levels of this enzyme and so when there's any reactive oxygen species maybe from an infection or from a drug that they have taken then there's not enough of these enzymes to produce glutathione which will actually protect the red blood cells against the lysis and this is actually genetic we'll talk about that more later okay so quickly um, I'll take you through how this test is done and then I'll also take you through the principle and how to read the results so glucose phosphate is an enzyme and in this test we want to test for deficiency of it there are people who are deficient for this enzyme and so this test is to help us uh, detect that and i have two reagents here i have uh, sodium nitrite here and then i have the redox dimethylene blue also here okay so i'll talk about the principle and then i'll go into how each of them work but to do the test you need your patient sample so i have two samples here uh, this patient, patient one, and then there is another one too. Uh, I think patient N. So we know. So I'll label it as N. So you get your empty test tube, plain tubes, looking like this, and then you label them. Okay. So you label one as uh, positive. Um, so you label one as positive so we put that one here and then we label one as the normal normal or simply you can put the negative there and then we have two patients we have patients one so test test one and then we have another patient no let me use their name n u r u okay so that's about that and so what are you going to do let me arrange this one so it's very 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 simple test you're going to take um we're going to use 500 microliters of the blood to um, 25 microliters of the reagent and this is actually a simple ratio in proportion and so um, in case you have more blood you can use more of the blood so you can do let's say two mils of the blood is to let's say 100 microliters of reagent in my case I want to do 500 microliters of the blood to 25 microliters of the reagent so that's what i want to do in this that's how much sample i have okay so if your sample is less and less you can do the calculation for yourself okay um so 
this is what I have. I'll open them and then I'll pipette the samples in there. After that, I'll explain the principle to you. Okay, so this is my micro pipette set to 500 microliters. And then I'll get my tips. Okay, so um, here we go. So I'm going to pipette 500 here into the positive test tube. And then I'm using the same sample for the test. And then I'm pipetting the same sample for the normal. That's the last one there. So that's the normal. Okay. Then then I'm going to put my patient to the new in this one. Okay, so I'm using a new micro pipette. I'm doing two because one is defective so that you can know the difference between the defective and the one that is not defective okay so I also put that one here so this patient one this patient two okay so after you've done this this positive this normal this first patient and this the second patient Okay, you take your um, nitrite, you pipette 25 microliters of the nitrite. So this is 25 microliters, I'm going to pipette it. So that's 25 microliters, and I'm going to put it in the positive. Another 25. I'm going to put it in the test. Another 25. I'm going to put it in the second test. I'm not going to put any in the normal. Notice that. Okay. Then we can close our sodium nitrite reagent and then move to the methylene blue. Okay, so you pipette also 25 of the methylene blue into the patient one sample and then patient two sample. Okay, so. 25 that's 25 microliters and then another 25 into patient 2 here yeah. okay like that and then you can just discard this so you close this and then you incubate this for three hours three hours so you can do an air bath incubation or water bath incubation any of them is fine so after you shake them it's now ready for incubation so i'm going to take this to the fridge and to the incubator sorry and then we will talk about the principle Okay, so I've sent it to the incubator. Okay, so um, so what's the principle of JCSPD? It's very, very simple. So this test is actually called the met hemoglobin reduction test. Good. Um, first, the hemoglobin in the red blood cell 
will be converted to met hemoglobin by the sodium nitrite so sodium nitrite will convert the hemoglobin to met hemoglobin and once that happens then we introduce the methylene blue which is a redox dye so this redox dye will actually activate the pentose phosphate pathway which will eventually convert the met hemoglobin back to normal hemoglobin so that's the work of the methylene blue so in patients with normal gcspd level the um, conversion is able to happen that is, is successful so methylene blue is able to convert the uh, meth hemoglobin back to hemoglobin because there are enough levels or enough amount of glucose phosphate dehydrogenase in patients who are deficient of this enzyme you realize that the conversion will not happen and so uh, the hemoglobin will still be in the oxidized state in the oxidized state that's the met hemoglobin good and so when after three hours we read our results and we'll see how they look like and then we we'll interpret our results okay and this uh, is genetic disorder and it's linked to the x chromosomes and so what happens is that males have just um, one x chromosome whilst females have two x chromosomes so males have x and y chromosome females have x and x and then the deficiency is linked to the x chromosome and so males are more affected males are more affected more affected than female uh, counterparts so because females have two uh, x chromosomes unless they are heterozygous for the disease really deficient they are not as affected as their male counterpart who are always homozygous for GCSPD deficiency okay so i think that's about that so um after three hours we'll read our results and then see what we got okay okay so it's after three hours and then we want to read our results so these are the three of them you can either read it directly or add some uh, normal saline to it to allow you to uh, make it the visualization easy so this is the positive test this is the patient one this is patient two and then this is the normal the one without any reagent so um, hope you can see you can see how dark it is it becomes dark as there's the positive compared to the normal compared to the normal and then this is my test for patients one let's look at how it is so if you compare this this is normal because it didn't become like this there's normal conversion it almost looks like this so patient one is uh, normal then let's look at patient two this is uh, this patient two is almost looking like the positive so patient two is defective for the enzyme okay so that's about how this test is done